currently what we have is a pause menu where we can hit the P key and our pause menu will become enabled and then we can choose to resume or head back to the main menu. To add to the effect of our pause menu, you may see in, in a lot of popular games, this is actually an animation that will come down from, from the top of the screen, the bottom of the screen, wherever, and it will basically, when you hit the P key, a screen will fly in and then you can make your selection. So we're gonna go ahead and animate this so that when you hit the P key, our pause menu will come from the top down to the center. And it'll all be animated and you'll still be able to control it as normal. So to do this, the first thing we wanna do is create the animation for this. So let's go ahead and make it so we can actually see what we're working with here. So I'm going to disable the title screen. I'm going to re-enable my pause menu. And what I'm gonna do is while I have my pause menu selected, I'm going to select my animation, view. And if you don't have this window open, you can go to window animation, and then you can drag the panel down here. So on the animation view, there's a create button, which will create a new animation clip. Let's go to your animation folder. And let's call this pause menu animation. We'll go ahead and save it. And what you'll notice here is now we have our pause menu animation and we can go ahead and start recording. So to record, there's a red button here in the animation view, select that. We're now recording. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set our pause menu to the starting position, which is going to be above the screen. So here, select your pause menu and just drag it up. As we drag it up, you'll notice that keyframes were inserted in the animation view. So here's our starting position. You can check the game view to make sure that it's out of scene, it's, you can't see it. And what we can do now is we can hop back down to our scene view or our animation view. And let's go ahead and create our end position. So here you'll see we have a time track. So the starting position of the animation is going to be at the top. The end position will put it at the five second mark and the five second mark is going to be the end position. So just drag it back down and you'll see that keyframes were automatically added. Go ahead, click in your game view and make sure it's centered where you would like it to be. When you're happy with the results, go back to your animation, stop recording, and here you can actually change the sample rate. So if we actually play this now, you're gonna see it flicker back and forth extremely fast, 60 frames per second. To slow it down, go ahead and set it to about five frames per second. And now you can see it's very nice and smooth. So I'm gonna use five, but you're more than welcome to use whatever you want. Now what we can do is we can select our pause menu panel. And you can see here that it automatically added the animator component as well as the pause menu controller. And if you double click that controller, you'll see it takes us to the animator view, which actually triggers the animation. Now, if I actually go ahead and run my game right now, it's going to instantly play that animation and it's going to loop. We don't want it to loop. So to fix that, we can click on the animation itself, pause menu animation, and just uncheck loop time. By saving our scene and running our game, you'll now see that, that the animation no longer loops. And we're stuck in the, uh, and now we just have it on screen, and if I hit the resume button, everything functions as normal. So how do we make it to where it only enables itself when we hit the P key? Well, that's really easy. What we can do, is we can actually change this state to only trigger when it happens. So we need a, a state. There has to be a default state. So we don't want the default state to be play this animation. We kind of want the default state to be just an empty state. So let's just call this empty and it's not gonna have any functionality. It's not gonna have any animation. It's just going to be our default state so that we can control when it's time to go to our animation. So, whoops, I accidentally renamed this. Rename that back to pause menu, animate, click on your new state, call it empty, and right click it, set layer as default state. Now what will happen is instantly we'll go into this empty state and our pause menu animate will never happen. So what we can do now is we can actually set our pause menu to be up above the screen since that's where it's going to start when it animates anyways. So go ahead and select your pause menu and let's move it up above the screen at say 150, it might be different for you. Just make sure it's out of scene, um, it's out of view. Okay, so while we have our pause menu selected here, we are in the animator. What we can do now is we can create a transition to this pause menu. When, does, when do we wanna play that pause menu animation? When we hit the P key, right? So the animation system using the animator gives us parameters that we can choose to basically control logic within animations. 
For example, when the game is paused, play an animation. Well, how do we know how to do that? So we can add param select the parameter plus sign, and what we're going to do is add a bool. And this bool is going to be is paused. So when our game is paused, this bool will become true. And when our game is unpaused, it will become false. So what we can do now is we can control the animation based on this paused parameter. So right click your empty state, make transition, and attach it to your pause menu animate. And what we can do here is click on the white transition, and you'll see here we have conditions. What we can do is add a plus icon here, and now we can actually create if then logic for our animation. So our condition is is paused. Basically what we can do is if is paused is true, we're gonna play the animation. So let's go ahead, save our scene, and let's go ahead and hook this up via script so that we can actually make use of this is pause trigger and how it works. If I actually run my game, right now we're in the empty state. Watch what happens when is paused is true. See that? So what we need to do is we need to trigger this through code. 